As the creator of the third room, it is necessary for me to rank the characters on a tier list. I simply must. I will be ranking them based on activity, their personality, and the quality of their appearances. Austria, being one of the most powerful nations, she has had a large role. However, she has not had as much screen time as one would expect with having a large role, with the exception of episode 5. Characters like France have had a large amount for all five episodes thus far. Despite her lack of screen time, at least considering she's among the main four, she performs wonderfully when involved, and with this I will give Austria a mid-A tier ranking. Bulgaria has had a minor role, particularly shown as Serbia's closest friend. Before episode 5, Bulgaria only had one appearance. Now that he is gone, Greece now has room to be perhaps the new power of the Balkans, while Serbia grieves his death. All in all, Bulgaria was mostly used to develop other Balkan nations. All three of his appearances were good, but his death was undoubtedly his best. With all this kept in mind, Bulgaria is a high C-tier character. The Confederacy, like Bulgaria, is a minor character. Despite not surviving the Civil War, he had a bit of development. From him believing that he was going to win this war quick, with the British on his side, to death one year later, after DC was under siege. I think it is easily agreeable that the Confederates were not a good character overall, so I shall give them a D ranking. Next in line is France. He has had a scene in every single episode, so France is a very active character. He has slowly grown to become more of a friend of the British than an enemy, but with the events in episode 5, this progression is left uncertain. Each time France has spoken, he has had something good to say, so France will be given a high A tier. Greece's actions have changed the Balkans forever. From the time he joined the Entente, he was able to convince Romania and Serbia to join it. Serbia still was very stubborn, and one can easily consider Greece to be manipulative. Although his methods are unorthodox, he still gets what he wants. His intentions are still pure regardless of the methods. Greece will be given a B ranking. Hanover, well, Hanover is among the worst characters on this list. While he has talked three times, he has not contributed much at all. He is interested in stopping Prussia, yes, but this does not make him unique at all. That is all there is to him. Hanover will be given an E tier. Mexico had a decently large impact on the outcome of the Civil War. He gave America some final morale, pushing into Texas. However, he has very little of a personality. Mexico at least has the goal of restoring the faith his people once had in him with the war with Britain. You can think of him as a typical unthinkable character. All in all, he is not absolutely terrible, but he needs improvement. A C tier will do him justice. Nade has been pushed around by the Ottomans for a while. With episode 5, he has dealt himself justice. He is on the way to achieving what he has wanted, to defeat the Ottomans and unite the Arabs under his banner. This may be a controversial placing, but Nade will be placed at S tier. Why? Because Nade is terrifying. The Netherlands has the same issues as Hanover. He is mostly motivated by restoring his former glory. However, he is slightly more active and has experienced more than Hanover has. This gives the Netherlands a slightly higher position than Hanover at a D tier. The Ottomans were not an excellent character, nor a bad one, trying to keep his empire together while holding down Nade's ambitions. The Ottomans are a pretty balanced character all in all, so he will receive a C tier. Russia is a lot to take in. He wants to unite Germans, but cannot do so himself. He needs the help of Sweden, but he cannot really respect him. It is a superiority complex that could possibly lead to his end. It is not the end of the road for Prussia, however. He very well could be among the most unique characters in the Third Room. With this, he receives a mid-A tier. Romania is interesting. Formed by the unification of the former Wallachia and Moldavia, 
she has always been in competition with Russia and Austria. She finally united her people by gaining much from the European crisis along with Serbia. With Bulgaria gone, Romania will be the new closest friend of Serbia, and vice versa. Romania is a B-level character. Russia, the primary voice of the series. Despite being called such, he does not necessarily live up to the title. Although active, France is indeed a lot more active than him. Just like Austria in episode 5, he mostly redeemed himself in that regard. Now that Austria believes he has just been using her all this time, he will have some issues keeping his power over Europe. Overall, Russia is a mid-B-tier character. Sardinia is a very ambitious character. He has a very large resentment of Austria for her keeping Italians under her influence and occupation for so long. With the European crisis's end, however, Sardinia is finally en route to fulfill his goal. The main competitor he will have to worry about now is Sicily. Sardinia is also a mid-B character. Serbia throughout his existence has always had a conundrum. Does he unite his people, or does he stay loyal to his liberators? It has never been easy for Serbia, and with the death of Bulgaria, he will no longer have the conundrum. He has brought his people together, and now Romania will be his new best friend. Serbia, although a minor character, has had a lot to contribute. And with that being said, he is an undoubtable high B-tier character. Not much is known about Spain as of now. For now, all he has done is help Sicily compete with Sardinia. With the inevitable unification conflict to happen in Italy, Spain will likely become a more active part. Since not much is known, Spain will be given a mid-C ranking. Sweden has not had too many appearances in the series, but he is still a somewhat active player. Although treated somewhat poorly by Prussia, he has still gained the help of him in this war with Russia. Now with Finland, he only has to invade Denmark to fulfill his dream. Sweden is a high C-tier character. Sicily, being the main competitor to Sardinia's dominance, has a somewhat active role like Sweden. Sardinia wanting to unite Italy and can continue to be active in Europe's affairs. Sicily is the opposite. He has a more pacifist view for the soon-to-be-united nation. With Spain on his side, it will certainly be a close battle when the conflict breaks out. Sicily will be placed right with Sardinia at a mid-B tier. The British have wanted to take down the Russians ever since the rise to power, but Britain has failed to beat America, and with it, Russia. He has become much more reliant on France to earn victories. Their argument has made their future as allies uncertain, although very active in the series, having at least some of a personality, and generally performing well gives him an A ranking. America having the Civil War has brought a whole new element. It is no longer just Europe. Along with Russia and Mexico, he was able to succeed and take down Britain. Now enlarged, he has the potential to become a great power if given enough time. America is a B-tier character. So there you have it. Plenty of the Third Realm's characters put on a tier list. I've left a link in the description to this tier list so you can make your own. Just be aware that no list can outmatch the accuracy of this one here. But yeah, that's it. Take it easy, everyone. See ya.